to understand the knee on the neck, you need to examine your own necks, all of you here in the jury, like I'm doing now. And so, I mean, the first thing is, if you put your index and thumb up here at the top of your neck, the first big thing you're going to find is your Adam's apple. And you can find the Adam's apple, and it's a very sturdy structure, because it's surrounded by cartilage, and it protects the voice box, the larynx, which is essential to, uh, for speech. And so any amount of compression on the Adam's apple is not going to compress it. This is an extremely strong, sturdy st structure. It's not going to be compressed by a knee on the neck. Then you go down from your Adam's apple and you feel the little bumps beneath that. And these are the uh, rings of cartilage of, of your trachea or your trachea. So this is your windpipe here. And so that's, again, because of the cartilage there, a knee on the front of that part is not going to cause compression. Okay? But then bring your finger up to the top of your Adam's apple. And up at the top of your Adam's apple, you're now directly over the hypopharynx. And the hypopharynx is the crucial area in Mr. Floyd. So this here is where the hypopharynx is located on your surface anatomy. So why is the hypopharynx uh, important for understanding this case, what happened? The hypopharynx is very important for understanding this case for a number of reasons. Because it's so vulnerable, because it has no cartilage around it, it's going to be an area that is compressed, it's extremely small to breathe through, and it becomes very important for being able to continue to breathe through. Doctor, I want to show you uh, what's been marked as States Exhibit 935 and 937. Okay. Could you identify, just for the record, tell us what, what's depicted? Yes, I, I'm looking at 937, which is the hypopharynx. And then 935, there we go. And 935, which I'm looking at 935, which is the hypopharynx with a coin. And uh, do uh, these two uh, images fairly and accurately depict the hypopharynx? They do. Uh, Your Honor, all for states exhibit 935 and 937. 935 and 937 are received. Uh, we can show them to the jury. So, Doctor, using uh, Exhibits 937 and 935, uh, could you help us to better understand what the hy hypopharynx is and what it does? Right. So, I, what you're looking at here, I don't know if this works. Yeah, it does. So, here at where I've drawn in red is the top of your tongue. Okay, and that's the tongue there. And then above it is an empty space. And then above that is the top of the hard palate. So, that orients you there. And say, then the tongue comes down along here. And the critical structure in this case, because the act of speech in Mr. Floyd becomes very important, how he was able to speak and all these different things. So the structure that gives us speech are the vocal cords right here. And they're in the voice box and in the larynx. And then we have a little area here called the epiglottis. It's a little sliver. And that comes back to prevent food going the wrong way when we're swallowing. Because we use the hypopharynx both for swallowing, for eating, and we use the hypopharynx for breathing. So when we're breathing, the air is going to come in through your nose or your mouth, go on down through the hypopharynx, then through the vocal cords and into the windpipe, into the trachea, and go on down into the lungs. Whereas when you're swallowing, that trap door of the epiglottis will, fall back, will prevent the food going into the air passages and will direct it into the uh, food tube at the back, the esophagus. The area of the hypopharynx then is exactly from the base of the epiglottis, the first yellow arrow, down to the second yellow arrow, which is the, the larynx. And it's just that little area that is the size of the hypopharynx. Could we see 935, uh, Brett? And so this, the, we know that the cross-sectional area of the hypopharynx in adult people 
I have it here in the millimeters 199 to 303, which are obviously difficult to remember, those type of millimeters. But in fact, right in the middle of this would be the size of a dime. So a dime is basically the size of what the hypopharynx, and it tells you how small and how vulnerable is this area. So if it's going to be decreased in size, it's a very tiny area. And so why is the hypopharynx important in the case of Mr. Floyd? Because the hypopharynx is going to be the area that will be vulnerable to occlusion from the knee on the neck. But in addition, the hypopharynx has another aspect, and that is the hypopharynx is also controlled by the size of your lungs. As your lungs expand, you increase the size of the hypopharynx with every breath. And so there's a regulation of that that's going on. Was Mr. Chauvin applying force or pressure to the hypopharynx of Mr. Floyd that you observed? At different times. It varied from time to time. Now, are you able to tell us uh, if Mr. Chauvin had put his weight uh, directly, his full weight on Mr. Floyd's uh, neck, uh, are you able to tell us what impact or effect that would have had on Mr. Floyd? Right. If uh, Mr. Officer uh, Chauvin had placed his knee directly on the hypopharynx, just that area of the dime, and it never varied from there, and it kind of came in like a bullseye on that particular area, then you would expect that this area would become totally occluded. But it did, it mean, he varied the position. Mr. Floyd varied the position of his head, and Officer Chauvin also varied the uh, position of his knee, so it varied over time. And if it had if it had become totally occluded, then what? If it had become totally occluded, within seconds you are going to drop the level of oxygen to a level that will be uh, produce uh, oxygen deprivation in the body, resulting in either a seizure or a, a heart attack, one or the other. Do you have another photograph? taken from footage uh, at the scene that would help the jury understand this point? Yes. I'm going to show you what's marked as State's Exhibit 941. And this is uh, derived from uh, Exhibit 15 already in evidence. Uh, do you recognize this, uh, this photograph in uh, 941? Yes, I do. Uh, Your Honor, we offer State's Exhibit 941. Any objection? 941 is received. Uh, Dr. Tobin, uh, tell the ladies and gentlemen of the jury uh, what it is you mean to convey uh, here in Exhibit 941. So if you're looking, say, on the one at the left, and if you look at me first before you look at that, so if you stick your finger in your ear and you draw a line from your, the finger of your ear going down through the vertebral bodies in your spinal column. You can get a line going down, and you're looking at that axis. And that's what I've drawn in here with the yellow dotted line. And so if you look here on the first slide, you see that Mr. Floyd's nose, his face, is directly face down on the street. It's not at any angle. So the next thing is, again, don't look at, this, at the slide, feel yourself on your own neck. And now, if you put your hand at the back of your neck, and you, put at the, you feel the bottom of your skull, yeah. uh, and so where the skull, the bone of the skull ends, and then you come down from that, and you'll find, and you put your whole palm of your hand around it. Sorry?
Members of the jury, uh, the witnesses ask you to do certain things. These are not required. Uh, you may do them, and he should phrase it more in terms of if you were to do that. And if you wish to do it, that is your choice. You are not required to do anything that the witness instructs you to do, but feel free to do it if you wish. Mr. Blackwell. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Dr. Tobin, if we could uh, go back to where you're explaining the, the anatomy in the back of the base of the skull. Yep. So as I'm putting my hand here at the back of my neck, and I'm feeling the tip of my skull, and then I'm bringing down my hand, I'm feeling an extremely thick ligament, and that's called the nuchal ligament. And it's almost, if you, as I put the full palm of my hand on my nuchal ligament, it's almost like wood. It's a, so strong a ligament. And that ligament is what you're seeing. The knee is being placed over on the left-hand slide. And so with a knee directly over the nuchal ligament, it can cause no obstruction because this is such a dense ligament. And that's what you're seeing. And you're seeing as well with the yellow triangle, or sorry, the yellow diagonal here, that the bulk of Officer Chauvin's knee is above that yellow line. The second thing, separate from this, on this slide, you can see that Mr. Floyd has his face rammed in to the street because he's using his face here to try, as to try and crank up his chest. He's actually using his forehead and his nose and his chin as a way of trying to help them get air into the right side of his chest. There's another way to crank up his chest. And, and how do you contrast that to what we see uh, in the photograph on the right in Exhibit and 941? On the right-hand side, you can see now the orientation of uh, Mr. Floyd has changed. And also you can see the position of Officer Chauvin's knee has changed because it's come down below the yellow diagonal and in this position there's going to be far greater compression of the hypopharynx in this re region here compared with what you were seeing on the left side. On the left side there's no compression of the hypopharynx but on the right side and if you watch the videos over time you will see that there is a variation over time as to wh where exactly is the location of Mr. Floyd's uh, head and where is the location of Officer Chauvin's knee. Uh, 